When it's hot, it's always nice to have a little spot to get out of the sun. It's a lot hotter out here than it is underneath an awning. So whether you are biking, maybe you're at a sporting event, tailgating, or maybe just overlanding somewhere in the middle of nowhere. Well, the Rhinorack Sunseeker awning is gonna bring shade to you so you're not gonna be hot wherever you go. The nice thing about the awning compared to maybe just a stand-up tent one, it's going to be up on our roof and it's ready to rip. Two, we don't have to put it on the inside of our vehicle, so it's not really taking up any more room on the inside. I really like that. And when it comes to the crossbars and the amount of space it takes up, only about an inch and a half, which is awesome because it's not really going to limit you from all the other accessories you like to put up on your roof. And this is just ready to go. It's on top of your vehicle, so you can drive out to wherever you want to be and provide some shade. If only you could feel how much cooler it is underneath the awning compared to outside, you would definitely be sold on the Sunseeker. But if you want to see how we got it all set up, stick around. We're going to show you. So we're in the parking lot at E-Trailer. Let's just imagine we're at a tailgate. So what we're going to do is get some shade because it's hot out here and I don't like that sun beating down on me. So step one, unzip on both sides. And once we do that, we can kind of start to undo this. We want to get these corners up and around. Might have to do it on both sides to get it to actually stay. Just like that. So now that that's done, we're going to have some hook and loops right there. If you want to hold this up as it will start to come out like that. And if you're doing this by yourself, it might be a little bit trickier, but I think we can get it done. So we're gonna have our little poles in here that will telescope out. So once that's kind of done and loosened up, we can go ahead and start unrolling. Just like that. And then we have these little holes right here. And that's where our little poles are gonna go. So we can take this out, fit it into that little hole. Just like that. And once it's completely stretched out, we can rotate this so it's not gonna move. And while we're back here, to kind of help, we can go like this. Tighten that up, kind of help pivot that. Like I said, it's gonna be a little bit easier with a friend, but sometimes you just like to get to the spot and set up so no one has to do anything whenever they get here, but relax. So now that that's done, do the same thing with this little arm here. It's the same little half twist to get the leg out and then a half twist to lock it in place, just like that. So we're pretty much almost done. All I gotta do is just tie these down with our stakes. Now we wanna go ahead and take this little bag. It's gonna have our stakes in it. And then we're gonna take our little hook and our guy rope. So on one side of the guy rope, we're gonna have a little plastic piece, but right now we're going to go on the other end and you just wanna tie this off however you wanna tie it. I usually do just a double just in case so it doesn't slip. So once that is good and it's nice and tight, what we want to do is take our stake and then we're going to go in at a 45 degree angle. So kind of like this with the hook facing away. So once it's like that, go ahead and push it through the ground best you can at an angle like that. And then what we want to do is we're going to take this, go underneath, just like that. Then we'll come up top here and we're going to have a little peg. That's where this hook's going to go, just like that. So once that's on there, down low we'll take our 
plastic piece go in like this and then we can tighten it up just like that what we want to do with these little hook and loops just wrap it around like that and we're going to have a couple on each side so let's be sure to do that just so it's not going to fly up on us Well, that was pretty simple. Didn't take a whole lot of time, maybe about five minutes to get it all set up. But now that you saw us set it up and get it all ready, we're gonna go over some more technical specifications. The material is gonna be waterproof. So if you do have rain in the forecast, unlike us, it is going to be waterproof. You don't have to really worry about it seeping through or anything like that. If you are going to prepare for rain, you just wanna make sure that this side is gonna be a little bit lower than that side. So the rain is gonna come this way and not towards where we store the awning. So this is gonna be made of a poly cotton material. So it is going to not fade over time and also with scratches and scuffs and stuff, you don't really have to worry about that. It's just a plain brown. So it's nothing really exciting up here, but it does provide about 50 SPF so it's not completely shade, but it is gonna protect your skin from getting completely fried. We are gonna have anodized aluminum, so this isn't gonna rust away over time, so this nice black finish to it is going to stay for seasons and seasons to come. That's always nice just because you never know if you're gonna be blocking from the sun or the rain. With this, it's gonna be protected against both. As far as dimensions go, we're going to have a length of about 98 inches and it's going to come out about 82 inches. And with these telescoping poles, if you have some taller fellas that you may be hanging out with, it is going to go all the way up to about seven feet, which is perfect for those taller folk you may be with. And that's going to be on both of them. So. It's always kind of nice to be able to accommodate not only for you and the kiddos, but also some of those guests that you may have. You want them to be as comfortable as you can. And shade is one thing, but no one likes hitting their head on anything. And this is basically about 55 square foot. So to give you kind of an idea, I could have somebody to my right and to my left and we would be shaded when the sun's above us. But to give you an idea, comparing to this vehicle, this is a RAV4. So it covers from the back hatch all the way to the beginning of your windshield. If you are setting up in a parking lot, to give you an idea, we are taking up about a full parking space. So if you are tailgating, make sure to have an extra space on the awning side to make sure you can fully utilize the awning. If I was you, I would definitely just keep this thing up on the roof. One, it looks kind of cool, and two, it's going to be nice and safe in the PVC housing. So once everything goes in there, you don't have to worry about any water getting in. And if some does get in through the zipper for some reason, if you got extreme weather, eh, the zipper's at the bottom, so it'll drain out. On the vehicle side of the awning, it's only going to stick up a couple inches from the top of your rails, but that's all going to depend on your roof rack and your vehicle. So if you have a taller vehicle, we can orient this bracket in a different manner, or we have other relocation brackets and stuff on our website to get the right fit that you're looking for. We can put these on the Rhino Rack Heavy Duty bars or even the Vortec Aero bars, but if you do have other types of roof racks, maybe it's a different brand. If it has the T-slot, we're gonna be able to take the hardware that comes with the kit and install it on that. But if you're like me, and I have a factory roof rack, and as we all know, they don't have tracks in them, so I won't be able to use this. But we have a lot of options here at E-Trailer. I personally like the Slim Shady just because I don't have to buy a separate roof rack to get it installed. The Slim Shady just clamps around your factory bars or any of the other bars that you may have. So Slim Shady is gonna be on my vehicle, but you have options when it comes to roof racks and awnings with E-Trailer. If you are pretty set on the Rhino Rack Sunseeker awning, I would recommend that you grab the Batwing as well. So the Batwing can go on this side and it'll cover the front, the side, and the back. So you'll have pretty much almost your whole entire car besides the front completely covered. Also, we do have different extensions that we can put. Some have doors, some are just going to give you a little bit more shade. So there are a lot of options and upsides to going with the Sunseeker. Well, if you made it this far, we pretty much went over everything besides the install. So if you wanna learn how we got this up and onto the roof rack, stick around, we're gonna show you.
First things first, we want to familiarize ourselves with the hardware, make sure everything's here. This is what you're going to get with the kit. So we're going to have our brackets, we're going to have some washers and some nuts, and then we're going to have our options for our mounting. So today we're going to be using these because we have the heavy duty crossbars. But if you do have the Vortex Aero Bars, we'll just be using these for that. So we have four of these, but we're only going to be using two because we're not using Vortex Aero Bars. So take these, you can fit that into the slot and slide it down. And then what we're going to want to do is the smaller portion of our bracket is going to go to the bars and these holes here are going to go on here. But we're going to use the top one just like that. So what we want to do is all we're going to do is use a washer and a nut just like that. Slide that to the side and do the same exact thing for this one. And I'm going to leave them loose for now. We'll tighten them up a little bit more later. The way I'm doing this is a little bit different just because I'm going to do this by myself. So what you could do if you have an extra set of hands is take the brackets and install them on your bars first, but that's going to require an extra set of hands. I don't have that, but we can get around that. So what I did was I took a 13 millimeter socket and tightened it up a little bit just so it's pretty much flat, but I can still move it. And then I took a measuring tape and I measured from the center of the C channel on one bar to the center of the C channel on the other bar to kind of get a, an idea of exactly how much space I'm going to need so it's kind of close. So now I'm going to repair the bottom and to do that we're going to take our thicker little bracket just because we are using the heavy duty crossbars. What we're going to do is take this bolt and it's just going to go in with a washer and a lock nut. We'll put the lock nut on first and the other washer just like this. Just get that threaded just a little bit. We don't want to thread it all the way down just to where it's just about to pop out on the other side. We can do that on the other bracket as well. So now we can go ahead and grab this and put it up. So what I'm going to do is just get one in the channel and if your measurements are right you can get the other one in the channel pretty easily and then it'll just sit right there so I'm going to get it right to the edge and then go ahead and tighten it down. We're going to take the same exact socket and wrench to tighten that up and then you can go ahead and do the same exact thing for over here and we'll do that on both sides. Now's a good time to figure out if your hatch is going to open the way I positioned it. I want it to be close so it's not really overhanging a whole lot in the front. So it's pretty even on my roof and I can open up my rear hatch. Once everything is installed and nice and solid, we can go ahead and load up our roof rack with whatever else we want to put up there and we can go out to wherever you want to go and provide some shade. All in all, it's nice to have a spot where everybody can just sit down and relax. Whether you're kayaking at the farm or whatever it is, it's always nice to be comfortable, especially with the kiddos. So with the Rhinorex Sunseeker awning, it really does make any spot a nice shaded area so you guys can sit back and relax. Again, I'm Adam with E-Trailer and this is the Rhinorex Sunseeker awning.